Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Dividing Decimals. This is part one. It's a long lesson. We have a lot of problems here, but it's a very, very important skill to master. So we're going to get a lot of practice. Now, before you have, uh, before you conquer this, I really would like you to do two things. First, I'd like you to watch the previous lessons on understanding what a decimal division is using pictures. So in the back of your mind, I want you to have the picture uh, the picture of what's going on as we do our problems. Second of all, you really need to be pretty good at long division already, long division of whole numbers. We've done that many, many times in the past, many, many, many problems. If you are fuzzy on how to do long division, please stop and go do that right now. So once we have those two things out of the way, what we want to do is divide a decimal by another decimal. So for instance, let's say we have the decimal 20.4. We have 20 whole sandwiches and 0.4 of another, which is a little bit less than half of another sandwich. And we want to divide it by 1.7. So we have a decimal divided by another decimal. Now, in the picture model that we had in the last lesson, we could draw a picture of 20 whole things and then 0.4 of a, of a fraction of another thing. And then we can divide by 1.7. We could draw a picture of that and we could see how many times 1.7 is going to fit in there. How many times will it fit in to 20.4. That would work, but that's not going to be a great way to solve a lot of problems. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to do this. You're, you will have some questions the first time. You'll be like, why, why can we do that? How do we do that? Why is that okay? I want you to kind of keep your questions, but let me cycle through the first couple of problems so I can cycle through all of your questions. And then at the end, you'll understand everything. Now, dividing by 1.7 in long form is difficult to do. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to change this problem a little bit. What we want to divide by on the outside, we always want it to be a whole number. It just makes the math easier. So what we want to do is take this nasty little decimal point and we want to move it over here. But if we move the decimal spot one position over this way, then we must also move what is under the, 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 the um, division symbol uh, uh, one spot as well. So we move the decimal one spot this way and then one spot that way. You might say, why are you allowed to move decimals? Just hold your questions. I will explain why we are allowed to move decimals in just a second. But for now, just know that we want a whole number out here. So we move it one spot. And if we move it one spot out here, then we must also move this one spot as well. So then what happens is we're not going to solve this problem. What we really will do is solve a very closely related problem, which is 20, I'm sorry, 204 divided by 17. You see, the original decimal was here and we moved it one spot to the right, so now we have 17. The original decimal was here, and we moved it also one spot to the right, uh, which means we have a decimal point here and now a decimal point here, exactly as we've shown here. So what we're saying is now we're going to solve the problem 204 divided by 17. We already know how to solve that problem. You already know how to do that, right? Um, the uh, only trick is knowing that we, the, not trick, but the only thing we have to know is that we have we want a whole number on the outside of the division symbol. So we move one spot, move it one spot, now let's solve this problem. The answer that we get to this problem, whatever we get is the answer, is the same answer as what we would get if we just drew a picture and divided this. It just so happens that this is much easier to do and it gives us the same answer. Again, I will explain why we're moving the decimal in just a minute. Let me finish the problem. All right, how do we do long division? 17 divided into two, it can't go, it's, it's not, uh, two is not big enough. So consider 17 dividing into 20. It can only go one time, 17 is very close to 20. So we'll put a one right here and we put it over the zero because we're dividing into the 20. The next step is one times 17. We just put the 17 here and subtract. Now you can do the borrowing and, and all that to subtract or you can just think that you're subtracting 20 minus 17. You can start at 17 and count up to 20 to do the subtraction. If you want to go subtract 20 minus 17 on the side, that's fine. Or you can count up from 17, 18, 19, 20. There's only three uh, units between 17 and 20. So we can just put a three down here. To, to do it long form, we'd have to borrow here and all this stuff and that will make it cluttered. So we know the answer is three. After we subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down. Now what do we do? We have to figure out 17 times something is 34. We know that 17 times one is 17. What is 17 times two? 17 times two. Seven times two is 14. And two times one is two plus one is three. 17 times two is exactly 34. So this has to be a two. Two times 17 is 34. 
subtract 34 minus 34 is zero. And so uh, we grab the next digit, but there is no next digit. So we're basically done and the remainder is zero. So what have we figured out here? We figured out that if we take 204 and divide it by 17, we get 12 times. It fits in there exactly 12 times. So the answer to this problem is 12. The answer to this problem is 12. And that is exactly the same answer as we get when we take 20.4 and divide by 1.7. We convert it to this because when we don't have nasty decimals here on the outside, it makes doing the long division process easier. So what we're going to do every single time is when we're dividing by a decimal, we're going to move the decimal as many spots as it takes so that we only have a whole number out here. And however many spots we move it, we must also move the inner decimal the same number of spots. Because if you move one but not the other, then you've changed the problem. But if you move one of them and then also move another one, then they're the same. Let me give you a couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, of reasons why it's okay to do this. Picture you have a, a teeter-totter or a seesaw, right? And you have, it's balanced in the middle. You have one person on this side and one person on this side and it's perfectly balanced. It's not moving. It's perfectly flat. Now, if I put a bag of sand on one side, of course it's going to do this. But I can keep it balanced by also putting another bag of sand on the other side. And then I can keep the exact balancing the same of the seesaw. If I take one bag of sand off, of course it's gonna move. But if I take both sands off at the same time, then the children are still there and the seesaw is still exactly balanced. If we move one of these decimals by itself, then we've unbalanced everything and changed everything. But if we move both of these decimals the same, then the problem looks different, but actually gives exactly the same answer as if we do this. So that's one way of thinking about it. Let me tell you another way, a better way of thinking about it. When we do division like this, you really need to start thinking about division as being kind of like a fraction. It is a fraction. Fractions and division are basically the same thing. So what we have here is the fraction, uh, Two, let, let me do it, uh, yeah, I'll do it here. 20.4 divided by 1.7. 20.4 divided by 1.7. I know that you may not be thinking of fractions in terms of division yet, so it, because we talk about fractions as parts of a whole, but as we go more and more into fractions, you need to start thinking about fractions as being division. The fraction bar is basically a division symbol. Actually, the bar here with something on top and something on the bottom, doesn't it look a whole lot like this? A bar with something on the top and something on the bottom. A bar with something on the top and something on the bottom. So a fraction is division. It's the top thing divided by the bottom thing. Now we're dividing, taking this and dividing by this. Now remember, we said that when we deal with fractions, we can multiply or divide the top and the bottom by the fraction of the fraction by any number we want. That's how we simplify fractions, remember? We can divide the top by two and the bottom by two. We can divide the top by four and the bottom by four. I can divide the top by 10 and the bottom by 10 as long as I do it to, this, to both the top and the bottom, I have not changed the fraction. The same thing is true of multiplication. I can multiply a fraction by two or three or four as long as I do it to the top and the bottom at the same time. So let's see what happens. If, since I can do whatever I want, what would happen if, let me extend this fraction bar here, what would happen if I multiply the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction by 10? I'll multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by 10. Multiplying by the same number does not change the fraction. It just changed the way the fraction looks. And then what would we have? Remember, we talked about what happens when you multiply by 10. All that happens is you move the decimal. Right, So when you move, multiply by 10, you move the decimal to the right, making it 10 times bigger. And when you divide by 10, you move the decimal the other way. We talked about that before. So 20.4 times 10 is 204. And 1.7 times 10 is 17. So what we're saying here is that this fraction, 204 over 17, 
looks different than 20.4 divided by or over 1.7, but it's the same fraction because we've multiplied the fraction top and bottom by 10, and all that does is move the decimal. So this is why I can take 204 and divide by 17, and it gives me the same answer because this thing is the same exact thing as this thing. It means the same thing. We multiply top and bottom by 10. When, when I tell you to move the decimal, all you're doing is multiplying this one by 10 and multiplying this one by 10, which you already know that you can do that for fractions. But most of the time in, in, in learning long division, the teacher doesn't tell you what you're doing. They just tell you move the decimal. Move the decimal on the inside and on the outside, and you don't know why. It's because this is really a fraction and multiplying top and bottom by the same thing is okay. And so when you move that decimal here and here in lockstep at the same time, it's just doing this. So this is exactly the same thing as doing this. So for the future problems, we're not gonna do so much thinking about it. I wanted to just tell you what you're doing. But what we are in practice going to do is move the outside uh, decimal point to the right to give us a whole number, and then we'll move the inside decimal point, the same amount of places. That is going to give us the right answer in all situations. Now with all that talking out of the way, we can finally work more problems. Let's say that we have the problem. Uh, we're going to divide the number 1.85 and we'll divide it by 0 0.5. Now what we want to do is we want to move the outside decimal point one spot to the right and then one spot to the right. That is like multiplying this by 10 and then multiplying this by 10. And so you haven't changed the problem, but really we're going to kind of work a related problem, which since we move the decimal here, it'll be 18.5 and we'll divide that by, move the decimal over here, it's just going to be five. The zero won't matter at all, zero five, you don't need the zero there. So what we're doing really is we're going to be solving this division problem. We want a whole number on the outside just like we wanted to get to a whole number on the outside here. Now, when we do it, did it here, we ended up with a whole number on the inside too. Here, we ended up with a still a decimal on the inside. That's okay. The very first thing you want to do when you do these division problems, if you still have a decimal on the inside, the decimal point in the answer, it just floats right above. You don't have to count positions. You don't have to to do it like we did for multiplication or anything. All you have to do is look at where the decimal is and the final decimal is there. Look here, the decimal point invisible was here. Now we have an invisible decimal directly. You can kind of put a little dot there if you want, right there. So the same rule is happening here. So the decimal we already have. Now we, just, we can just solve the rest of the problem normally. Five divided by going into one doesn't work. Five going into 18. Five times three is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. That's too big. So it has to be 5 times 3, 15. What is 18 minus 15? Or you can think of 8 minus 5 is 3. 0 minus 0 is 0. After we subtract, grab the next digit down, we have 35. Now, 5 times what is 35? 5 times 7 is 35. So multiply, subtract and get a 0, grab the next digit. There is no next digit, so we're done. The remainder here, when we get down to a zero here, we're done. And the answer that we get is 3.7. So the answer to the whole problem that we're doing here is, we'll just say the answer is 3.7. This is the final answer. So in the first problem, we did the division and we got an answer of 12, a whole number. That just means that if we drew this out and divided it into 20.4, it would go 12 whole times. Exact amount of division going in there. When we do 18.5 divided by five, or the same 1.85 divided by 0.5, when you draw it out, what's gonna happen is it's going to fit three whole times, but it's not going to fit a fourth time. It's only going to fit a portion past that. It's not gonna fit quite four times. You'll have some leftover. It'll be able to go in a little bit more, but not all the way four times. It's only gonna go 3.7. Because remember, if we get to 3.8 and 3.9, we'll get closer and closer, then we'll roll over to 4.0. So when we get an answer of 3.7, it means it divides in three whole times and almost four, but not quite. So it wasn't able to go another full time in. All right, I know it's a little weird in the beginning, but I promise it will become clearer as we work more problems. We're gonna move that decimal point every single time on the outside. Let's take the next problem. Let's say that we really want to divide 16.72,
and we'll divide that by 3.8. So the very first step is to look on the outside. We have a decimal point here. We do not want decimals on the outside. We want whole numbers. We move one position there. Therefore, we must move one position there, which is keeping it balanced. But also, this is like multiplying by 10 and multiplying by 10. So we keep everything balanced. So the related problem that we're actually going to solve, we'll move the decimal one position over, is 167.2. And we'll divide that by 38. 38. All right, 38. So what we want to do is we want to figure out th this problem here is going to give us an answer, which will be the exact same answer as what we have started with here. Now, question for you. How many times can 38 go into one? Actually, one thing first. Before you do anything else, the decimal point in the answer just floats right above. You can even do that as the first step. All right, 38 goes into um, one how many times? Well, zero times because one is too small. How many times can it go into 16? Well, it doesn't really go at all because 16 is too small. So we have to consider 167. I'm not sure how many times it can go in, so I may have to go off to the side and start multiplying. Let me start multiplying 38 times four. Eight times four is 32. Three times four is 12. Then we go up 13, 14, 15 and we get an answer of 152. 152 is as close as I'm going to get to 167. If I multiply by five, I'm confident I'm gonna blow it because I'm already very, very close. So it goes four times. So put a four here, it goes four times into 167. When I multiply that, I get 152, we just did that. And so now I can subtract, seven minus two is five. 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, but I don't have to put leading zeros. And then finally, after I do the subtraction, I grab the next digit, which is a 2, and a 2 goes down there. Now, how many times do I go into this? 38 times something is 152, but we already know it, it's exactly 4. So 38 times 4, when we multiply, is 152 and we subtract, we get zero. And there are no more digits to bring down, so the process is done, and the answer that we got was 4.4. The decimal just comes straight, it floats right above there. And so the answer that we get for this problem is 4.4. So what does this actually mean? It means if I have $16.72 and $3.80, I can float another zero there if I want, and I divide in there, then what's going to happen is this can go into 16.72 four whole times, but it can't go five times. I, it goes a little bit more than four. I'll have some left over that it can go a little bit more, but not a whole time. Not even a half of a, if it were 4.5, it would go exactly four and a half times. It's a little less than that. So it's a little less than four and a half is what that division is. All right, I know it's a lot, I do. But really, when you get the hang of it, you realize there's really only one more step in the beginning, and that is moving the decimal point. Let's take a look at the problem, 28.86, and we'll divide that by 7.4. All right, so we want a whole number on the outside. So we move the decimal one position here, and in order to keep it balanced, we move one position there. In other words, multiplying by 10 and multiplying by 10 keeps everything balanced. So we want to rewrite the problem and do the related problem. It's going to be 288.6, and we'll then divide that by 74. That's what we actually have to do. All right, so first step, we take a look at what we have. We have a decimal point here, and the decimal point in the answer will float directly above. All right, next. 74 can't go into two, it's too small. 74 can't go into 28, that's too small. 74 can, it can go into 288, how many times? I don't really know, so let's try multiplying by three. Three times four is 12, carry. Seven times three is 21, one more is 22. So when I multiply by three, I get 222, and I'm trying to get as close as I can to 288. I can multiply by four, you can multiply by four if you want, but you're definitely going to blow past 288. It's, it's not gonna work, it's gonna be too high. The 222, if you add 74 more, is going to be too high. In fact, we can just do it real quick. 74 times four. 
Four times four is 16. Seven times four is 28. One more is 29. So 296 is too big. So that's too big. So it has to go only three times. Mm -hmm. So the three goes here. And we just said three times that is 222. And so we then subtract. Eight minus two is six. Eight minus two again is six. And two minus two is zero. I don't really need to put that. After I subtract, I drag the next digit down. And so I have 666 down there. All right, now the next question is 74 times what is 666? Now I know that 74 times 10 is just 740. When you multiply by 10, you're just adding a zero. So that's too big. So let's try multiplying times nine instead. We'll do 74 times nine. Nine times four is 36, carry the three. And then nine times seven, 63, 64, 65, 66. Oh, look, it exactly is equal to 60, 666. So it can go nine times. Nine times 74 is 666, which gives me a leftover of zero. And so the answer that we get is 3.9. So I can either just circle this or I can just write the answer down anywhere else. I guess I'll just circle it up here just so you can kind of see that this is the final answer, is 3.9. So if I were to take 28.86 uh, of something and divide it by 7.4 and see how many times it can fit in, it's telling me that it can fit uh, three whole times. And not quite four times, but very close to four times because the 0.9 is telling me it almost goes four times, but not quite. It's not quite enough extra to go a fourth time, but it's very close because it's at 3.9. All right, making good progress. Let's take a look at problem number five. We want to divide the following numbers, 8.47. We want to divide it by 0 0.22, 0 0.22. Now, here we have a decimal here and we have two digits. We do not want any whole numbers. Whereas before we only had to move one position, here we actually have to move the outside digit uh, decimal point two positions. And if we do it two positions on the outside, then we must move the inside decimal two positions also. So you might say, what would be happening here? If we multiply by 10, it would move it one position. If we multiply by 10 again, it moves it another position. So it's like multiplying this by 100 to move the decimal point, but we also move this one multiplying by 100, so it moves the decimal the same amount. Putting bags of sand on the seesaw, multiply by 10, multiply by 10, as long as I'm doing it to both uh, the inside and the outside or the top and the bottom of the fraction, I'm not changing anything. So what I really wanna do is solve the related problem. The related problem is 847, because we moved the decimal two times, divided by 22. And it doesn't even look like there's any real decimal points in the problem. But if you remember, there's an invisible decimal after the whole number. So there's like an invisible decimal right there. We don't usually write it, but we can still put it there. All right. 22 cannot go into 8. Too small. 22 can go into 84. How many times? I'm not sure. So let me try to go over here and say 22. Let's start by multiplying by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. All right, that's pretty close. Let's try to go a little higher. 22 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. This is actually too high. So it only actually can go 3 times. 3 times. And 3 times 22, we just said, was 66. And we subtract. Now here is where, you know, we have to do a little thinking. Because what we have to do is 84 minus 66. It's difficult to do that in our head. And we have to do borrowing here, but the four minus six. It's, it's going to look ugly if we do it under here. So what I really rather you do is come over to the side. What we want to do is 84 minus 66. And we cannot do four minus six. So we'll change this to a 14 and we'll borrow making that a seven. 14 going down by six is 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. 14 minus 6 is 8, and 7 minus 6 is 1. So the answer is 18. 84 minus 66 is 18. After we subtract, we pull the next digit down, but we have 187 there. 187. I'm not really sure um, exactly. 22 times something has to be 187. I'm not totally sure, but I, I, I know that it's going to be times 6 or times 7 or times 8 or whatever. I'm not really totally sure. So you have to kind of play with it a little bit. So let's go over here and see what 22 
times 8 is? 22 times 8. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 times 2 is 16, one more is 17. So that's 176. If I go times 9, I'm going to blow it. I'm going to go past 187. So it has to be times 8. And if you want to go times 9 and prove it to yourself, then you, of course you can do that. So we're going to say it goes 8 times. So it goes 8 times here, and 8 times 22 we just said is 176. And we subtract. 7 minus 6 is 1. 8 minus 7 is also 1. 1 minus 1 I don't have to write. Now here is the point where I turn around and I have to teach you something really important. When we're dividing decimals, our goal is to get down to where the remainder is zero. Notice how the remainder was zero, so we knew we were done here. The remainder was zero, so we knew we were done here. The remainder was zero, so we knew we were done. I can keep going back to the other problems. The remainder was always zero, so we knew we were done. But now, when we subtract, it looks like there's no other digit here, so it looks like we have a remainder of 11, and you think you're gonna put remainder 11. R11. We don't do that with decimals. We do that for the other division, you know, the, the whole number division that we have learned in the beginning. But when we have decimal division, we really want the remainder to be zero down here if possible. Here, the remainder is 11. So we need to keep going in the process, but we don't have any more digits. So what we have to do is add some digits, right? Because what's going on here is even though we're dividing 847 divided by this, there's an invisible decimal here, and as you know, we can add zeros after a decimal point, as many as we need to add to make the process work out. So since I was able to add a zero there, now the, um, the, the, uh, I do have another digit to drag down, which is a zero. Remember what we did was we subtracted, we get an 11, and we always try to grab the next digit but we didn't have an, another digit, so we had to add, after the decimal point, a zero so we would have something to grab to come down. Now, we have 110 down here. Two times what is 110? I'm not sure, so we're going to try to go 22 times five, and let's see what we get. Two times five is 10, carry the one. Two times five is 10, plus one is 11. So 22 times five is 110, 22 times five multiply is 110, subtract. Now we get a remainder of zero. Now we know we can stop. So the answer to this problem is 38.5. So when we take this number and divide it by 0.22, it can go in and fit inside 38 whole times plus another half. It can't go another whole time, it can go a half. I need to kind of talk about this a little bit as before we go on. The process works the same for this problem as, as for the other problems, but in the other problems, we got a remainder of zero, so we stopped. We got a remainder of zero, so we stopped. We got a remainder of zero, so we stopped. But here we had a, re a, a remainder of 11, and we thought we should stop, but when we divide decimals, we always want to get to a remainder of zero. And so we had to add and put the decimal point that we know is there and add a zero, which does not change the number. It doesn't change anything but it allows us to continue the process to get down to a remainder of zero. So we have to keep an eye out for that. Sometimes we will have to do that. All right, move them right along. Problem number six. Let's say we have the problem uh, 3.36 and we want to divide that by 2.1, 2.1. So on the outside, we have a decimal here, we don't want any decimals, so we move one position, so we move this decimal one position also. So that means really we're going to solve the related problem over here of 33.6 and we'll divide it by 21. Move the decimal one position, one position, and this problem will be the same as the previous problem. So now we then look at the decimal point, we can float the decimal up into the final answer, and now we say, how many times can 21 go into three? We can't go into three. How many times can 21 go into 33? It can only go once because we know that, you know, it, you can kind of think of it as being close to 20 times two would be 40. That would be too much. So it really can only go one time. One times 21 is 21, subtract. Three minus one is two, and three minus two is one. After subtract, the next step is to grab the next digit, which is a six. And remember, we're looking for a remainder of zero before we stop this process. So we have 126 down here, and what do we do next? 21 times something is 126. I'm not sure uh, what to pick. 
I know it's not going to be, it's going to be kind of a big number, but I'm not sure. So let's go off to the side. 21 times 6. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And I get 126. I kind of guessed here, you might start with 5 or 7. Eventually, you'll figure out the closest you can get is 6. So it can go 6 times for 126, subtracting it 0. Now the remainder is 0, and there are no more digits to drag down. Now we know the process can be stopped. And the answer to this is 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 .6. Final answer. All right. We're almost done, actually. I know these are kind of long, but we just need to really get a lot of good practice to make sure that we're on the same page. Let's take a look at the problem, 6.56, and we'll divide it by 0 0.02. So on the outside, I have two digits after the decimal. I want to move this decimal one position, two positions to get a whole number. That means to keep it balanced, I have to move one position, two positions to keep it balanced on the inside. So really, I'm going to then solve the related problem of 656, and I'll divide that by, one. I move the decimal, I only have two on the outside. The leading zeros you can throw away once you move the decimal. This is what I want to solve, 656 uh, by two. Now I know there's an invisible decimal here, so there's basically an invisible decimal that floats right above. I don't have to put that, but you know I can. All right, next, what do we have? 2 times what is 6? 2 times 3 is 6, so multiply and subtract. I get a 0. Drag the next digit down, which is then 5. 2 times what is 5? 2 times 2 is 4. That's as close as I can get. 2 times 2 being 4, subtract, I get a 1. And I then, after subtraction, drag the next digit down. Now I have 16. 2 times what is 16? 2 times 8 is exactly 16. And I get a 0. Now I have a remainder of 0. I don't have any more digits. Of course, I can keep adding zeros, but I don't need to because I already got to a remainder of zero. So the answer we get is 328. The dot here really doesn't, um, doesn't really do much because you can put a decimal zero after if you like. So what I'm going to do is just say that the answer is 328. That was a whole number answer. All right, next problem. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some room. We're gonna solve the next problem down here. Let's say we're solving the problem. 0.91, and we'll divide that by 0 0.65. All right, first thing, we look on the outside. We have to move this decimal one position, two positions. That means we have to move this one one position, two positions also to keep it balanced. So we're really going to solve a related problem. We move the decimal, it'll be 91 on the inside, and we'll divide it by 65 on the outside. 65 on the outside. All right, next thing we want to notice is that, just as always, we have an invisible decimal right here. Let me get rid of this real quick. Uh, we have an invisible decimal here, so the answer will have an invisible decimal right there as well. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. I'll just kind of come more like over here. All right? Um, and so then we want to start by looking at saying, all right, 65 can go how many times into 9? Well, it can't go at all into 9, too small. How many times can it go into 91? Well, I know it can go one time, and I know that it cannot go two times, because if you think about this as being pretty close to 60, 6 times 2 is 12, so 60 times 2 is 120. If you multiply this, you're going to get something way bigger than 91, so it has to go only one time right here. So put a 1 right here, and then multiply, get 65, and then we need to subtract. Now, unfortunately, you have to do a little borrowing, so let's go over here and do 91 minus 65. Now we know that we can't do 1 minus 5, so make it 11 and borrow, and that becomes 8. 11 minus 5 go down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. 11 minus 5 is 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. So the answer here is 26. So we put a 26 down here. Now, we don't have any more digits in our problem, but we do also do not have a remainder of zero, so we have to keep going. Even though you, you think, oh, I don't have any more digits, really you need to be looking at the, remain the remainder that you kind of have, and you want to get it down to the point where it's essentially zero, or if you can, and so we have to continue the process. So we look up here and we say, well, we have 91, we have a decimal, we can easily add another zero here without changing the problem at all. So we're going to insert that and add that zero. Then after we did the subtraction, we just dragged that zero down and now we have 260 down there. So the question then is, 
65 times what is 260? I'm not sure the answer, so let's go here and do 65 times four. You could try times three or times five. Five times four is 20, carry the two. Six times four is 24, 25, 26. I didn't know that ahead of time, but you know, I also know what the answer is. So, but you might try times three or times five or whatever. Eventually you're gonna figure this out times four is the answer. So you put a four here, four times 65 is 260. Then you subtract and get a remainder of zero and now we don't have any more digits. We could continue adding zeros, but it doesn't help us do anything because the remainder is already at zero. So the answer to this is 1.4. So I guess I'll just kind of box this. The answer is 1.4. Sorry, this is kind of crowded here. The answer is 1.4 for this problem. So if we take 0.91 and we divide it by 0.65, it can go one whole time, almost one and a half times, a little bit less than one and a half times. All right, I think we have room for one more problem. And I think that'll be a good place to stop it uh, over here. So let's take a look at the next problem. I guess let's go up like this. Just give me a little space. Let's take a look at the final problem, 2.52. And we're going to divide that by uh, 0 0.08, 0 0.08. So on the outside, we don't want any decimals, so we move two spots to the right. That means we move two spots to the right here. All right, so that means we're actually going to be solving the related problem, I'll write it over here, of 252, and we'll divide that by zero point, I'm sorry, eight, because we moved it two, it's gonna be eight on the outside, eight. Now, we can put the decimal here because we know that there's a decimal after every whole number, and so the decimal in the answer has to be above there as well. So let's see how this shakes out. All right, eight can go, cannot go into two, it's too small. Let's try going into 25. Eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24. So it can go three times into 25. Eight times three is 24. We subtract, and we know that the answer is one. After we subtract, grab the next digit, which is a two. Now eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, that's too big. So it has to go only one time. Uh, eight times one is eight, subtract. Now we can uh, you know, borrow and all that, but really you know that if you go start from eight and count up to 12, nine, 10, 11, 12 is four. So 12 minus eight is four. And then you look for another digit, you don't have another digit and you think, oh, I guess I'm done. But you say, wait a minute, we're always trying to get to a remainder of zero and here I don't have a remainder of zero. So in decimal problems, I need to keep going. I can insert zeros after the decimal, it doesn't change anything. And then that allows me to drag, because I just subtracted, to drag the next digit down, which is a zero. And I have now 40. So now eight times what is 40? Eight times five is 40, multiply, you get the 40, subtract, you get a zero. And so now I do have a remainder of zero. I don't have any more digits. I could keep adding zeros, but I don't need to because I've already gotten to a point where my remainder is zero. So the answer to this is 31.5, 31.5. All right, that is a long lesson. Uh, a lot of writing, a lot of, you have to go off to the side and do your side work to make sure you can subtract or multiply to, to figure out what to do. I don't want you to lose sight of the big picture. The big picture is you have to do this division, but the decimal on the outside, you don't want decimals here. So you move the decimal over in the same number of positions, you have to move the, the what's under here, the decimal the same number of places. And then you do the division as normal. Sometimes you will end up where after you move the decimal, you still have a decimal on the inside. It just floats up above. See here, after we moved it, we still had one inside. It just floats up above. But sometimes you do it and you'll end up with a whole number on the inside, but you still have a decimal there. It still floats up above. It just, it's there. It's just 12 has an invisible decimal there. And then you go through the process as normal, always looking to make sure that you have a remainder of zero. Then you stop. When you have a remainder, then you stop. Here we got to a point where the remainder was four, but we didn't have any more digits, and so you're thinking you should stop, but you need to keep going. And the way that you keep going is you have to add zeros after the decimal point as many times as it takes until you get to a remainder of zero uh, there. And then, you, then when you finally do get to the point where the remainder is zero down under there, then you can stop and the answer you've calculated up above. I know it's a little weird, a little hard the first time we do it, but I think with practice 
you will get the hang of it. I'd like you to solve every one of these problems yourself. Start the thus and over, write down the problem, and do it yourself, even if you just saw me do it. Then I'd like you to follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with the concept of dividing decimals.